these apartment buildings because these are the people that you're going to be doing business with. You're going to be attracting. I'm going to give you some generalized financial brackets, if you will. A lot of times when you get into the multifamily game and we have $10 million assets or more, we're typically looking at financial institutions that own these. We've got life insurance companies love apartment buildings. You know why? They're safe. They know that they have to have a certain amount of cash on hands for someday when somebody dies, they gotta pay that stuff. Retirement programs love these things too because they put all these monies into an apartment complex. They know they're not gonna lose it. They know that it's a hedge against inflation. A hedge against inflation means that when the price of everything goes up, your asset value goes up too. And the reason that, that happens in the apartment business is because rents go up when everything else goes up. They're also a hedge against deflation in a lot of ways too, because when the stock market takes a crash, the housing market has a correction, the demand for rental housing goes up. You know, you can't put $12 million, $10 million, $20 million in a, in a bank account. It's just, I mean, that's, that's risky. Buying a building that has an income and cash flow and tax benefits and growth, that's a hedge against inflation and a hedge against the housing market, that's safe. That's a lot more stable than put parking cash in a bank, right? So that's why these institutions um, love to own apartment buildings. Can we buy from institutions? Yeah. If you, if you have the capital to play, you can play, right? Um, the, the challenge is you're probably going to be pay, uh, playing against all cash offers with very credible buyers. So it's a little bit of a difficult game. And they're, willing, they're not looking for great deals. They're not trying to squeeze cash flow out of a deal. They're not, they're, their job is just to protect what they got. Let's talk about the other side of this uh, business, which is I'm going to suggest less than $2 million or smaller, smaller properties. This is what we're gonna re uh, we refer to as your mom and pop buyers. A dentist who makes a lot of money. A guy who got an inheritance buys a little building, a six unit, a 10 unit, or something like that. And guess what? Because they're not sophisticated, they're not, they're, they'll usually pay more than a sophisticated buyer like you will be tomorrow, by the end of the day tomorrow. So the challenge inside of the small game is that it's open to so many people. You have tons of competition. So we like to play in the two to $10 million range, two to $12 million range, kind of in that space, because in that space, we have the least competition. We have a smaller group of people. Usually they're small investment groups like mine. When we get into commercial real estate, this becomes more of a team sport. We call these group investments for a reason. We have somebody that might qualify uh, loans for us. You might have somebody that just puts a capital contribution in, or many people that put capital in. And you get people that maybe you might need multiple people to qualify for loans for you. One that has some, some credit, some has some, some, some liquidity, some, and, and all these things. Now you might be that person, you might be able to qualify for all your own stuff. But the good news is if you don't, this is a much easier business to get into than single family because you can just assemble a team for what you need. And the banks are cool with that, right? You get one guy with some credit, one guy with some liquidity, one guy with some experience, put them all together, we can qualify for a $10 million loan. Boom, we're good, right? It doesn't have to be you. It doesn't have to sit all on your shoulders. So you can do this stuff by putting your team together.